Hey guys and gals, I'm uh, hanging out in the garage today. Got the uh, cool looking patio heater running because it's, it's freaking cold out there. Jamming some Tom Petty and working on the indoor vertical farm, which is actually going to be a garage vertical farm. And I'll explain why as I get done, but it's going to live out here once I get it together. Uh, I'm waiting on the rack to come. I'm going to be presenting this at the Mother Earth News Fair down in Belton, Texas, which means about a month after I build it, I'm going to have to take it apart, disassemble it, make sure nothing gets broke, transport it down to belt and reassemble it down there, present it down there, and then bring it back here. Uh, that's why it's not going upstairs in one of my guest rooms. Right, Dana? Uh, it just doesn't seem to make sense. So uh, this system is going to work on a 48-inch wire NSF uh, certified rack. You can get those things anywhere. I will tell you this, 48-inch, uh, or not 48, but the 24 depth of those they're not that much more expensive than an 18, but you're gonna wait for them. Mine's coming Friday. That's why I can only show you where I'm at so far. Now, one of the things I wanted is for each level, a purpose-built reservoir. These are uh, flood and drain tables. These are ebb and, flow, uh, ebb and flow trays that are made for hydroponics to do ebb and flow. We're not doing ebb and flow, but it doesn't matter. Um, they are actually designed to go on 48 inch racks. I found a lot of things like this, most of them, because of the odd shape, size, etc., the shipping was stupid. So you, maybe you can get them for somewhere between 70 and 80 bucks, but the shipping for like two of them was like $300, which is just stupid. They, they do freight or whatever. Amazon has these, um, and I'll put a link in the video notes where you can get them. 80 bucks, they ship free. Now, I only have one of them, I need two. The reason I only have one of them is they sent me two, and one was broke. That's why I love Amazon, though. They already have a new one on the way. We haven't even put the return item, dropped it off yet, um, but it'll be here tomorrow. So tomorrow I'm going to get the rack and the second uh, flood and drain tray. Uh, what's going to happen is this is going to be the top level of the system. So it'll be on, if, you've got, if that was a shelf right there I was building it on, this would be sitting on this shelf right here. Your lights are there. You still have that upper shelf to do something with. I'll tell you what I'm thinking about doing with that, not in this video, in a future video. And then water will come up from a sump that's located on the bottom shelf and enter here. And what I'll probably do is bring the water in on this side. I'll put a, you know, I'll put a hole in here and bring a pipe down in there and pump water into it. The reason I'm gonna do it on that side is I've already done the drilling. You see down there is a bulkhead. So if the water's entering on this side of the flood and drain table, it's gonna have to exit on this side. What I'm doing is a blend of crack key and recirculating deep water at the same time. Meaning the roots will have to reach down to the water, but and there'll be an air gap, but water will recirculate. Right now, my plan is to do that about 15 minutes out of every two hours on a, me a mechanical timer. Real, real, real simple. So it'll kick on, it'll recirculate, and it'll go off. It'll be off for an hour and 45 minutes. It'll kick on. That reduces energy requirements. Um, and it reduces the possibility of catastrophic flooding if you do this indoors, which is what it's designed for. Since it's going to live in the garage, I'll probably just let it the way that it is. If I was going to put it upstairs in my guest room, I would probably pop a second bulkhead in it somewhere else and put the stand-up pipe a little bit higher. That way, if this one ever clogs, once it builds up, it'll fail safe over and it won't flood. This one, again, we'll go back to if it was on that rack there. It was sitting there. Next rack will be right there. We'll overflow to this rack, and that rack will overflow back to the sump. So the pump will, the pump will, uh, the sump will have a pump in it. The pump will pump up to this side. Water flows across, drains, flows across, drains back to the sump. That simple. 15 minutes out of every two hours. We got that gap, that air gap for the roots to get all that crazy hair root that uh, Kratky gives us, but we got some recirculation as well. I just think that's good insurance, and we'll see how it works out. You can see I got numbers here. I don't think the average person that builds a system like this is going to number it. This is so I can keep track of what's planted in each hole, because I'm going to be doing a lot of research with different varieties and things. I think the average person will figure out what they want to grow, and they'll just harvest based on what's available. I did want to talk about the fact that there's exactly 30 holes. How'd that happen? Well, what I did was five inches on center for the rows this way, 
seven inches on center with the rows this way. That should give me plenty of room to grow out the type of thing this is meant to grow. This is not a tomato growing system. This is not a pepper or an eggplant growing system. This is greens and herbs, lettuces, um, mustards, things like that, salad greens, and, and some various other things. Uh, basil would be a great crop to grow in here, cilantro, things like that. What I wanted to do was make something where a family of four could eat a significant amount of food from this system every week, frankly, every day, 365 days a year, and never run out. So what we are on now with this, the way that it's designed, is a five-week rotation, and you can fully harvest 15 plants a week. How's that work? It'll make perfect sense. But I, I do want to point out before I explain that, you will be able to say, oh, that head's pretty big. Let's take a few leaves off it and do cut and come again harvest as you desire. You know, you don't generally use an entire basil plant. So take a little bit of the basil, a little bit of the cilantro for whatever you're doing with herbs that night, a little bit of leaf, a little bit of leaf. But once a week, go ahead and harvest 15 total plants. Think about how many people, how many people actually need 15 heads of lettuce a week? So 15, that could be a couple heads of lettuce, a couple bok choys, a couple fennel, whatever it is. You harvest that on Sunday. On Sunday, you also replant 15 new starts, and you take your starts that you started the week before, and you drop them to whatever 15 holes you pull plants out of on your two levels. So what that gives us, again, is five weeks, 15 a week, two levels of 30. That's a lot of food to grow in a two-foot by four-foot footprint. Anywhere in your house you can find the space you can do this. And uh, if you want to know more about it, again, come on down to Belton, Texas. I'll be uh, presenting this completely assembled, operational, live plants in it uh, at the Mother Earth News Fair on the uh, 15th and 16th of February. Uh, Belton, Texas is just north of uh, Austin. And I want to show you, like, so here's my other side of this. So right now, anyway, my plan is for this uh, commander tub. This will be my sump. This is where the pump will live. Got all my little plumbing parts and cat food in there. Um, bulkheads, and uh, I will use half inch unions on the plumbing so that if we need to disconnect something, we can have all the plumbing glued together. But if you need to replace the pump or something, you take the union apart, and uh, this will be the sump, and this will sit on that bottom shelf right next to it. Seven gallon concrete mixing tree, these are five bucks. We'll take a piece of the foam board that we're using for the tray tables, the floating tray tables, and do something like that. And that way we can fill this with just a lower fertility concentration for starting seeds, about half of what you grow at. That'll sit here, 15 holes in it, 15 net pots, no problem. Bottom shelf will just have two foot instead of four foot lights over it. So every week down in here, you drop your 15 new seeds in, but you take your 15 new plants out, boom. 15 plants a week, 365 days a year. That reminds me of something I didn't show you over here. So you'll notice this is sitting down in here. Since we're not doing straight deep water, we want that air gap. We're doing basically a Kratky deep water hybrid. I didn't want to take this foam board and stick it way up here and have to fill this dadgone tank damn near to the top, not be able to run that secondary overflow for let's not flood out our bedroom type situation. So here's what I came up with. Really simple. Uh, hard to do one-handed, but there you go. These are 88 cents at Home Depot. 88 cents. I'll fill them with gravel just to keep them weighted down so they're less likely to move. And that basically creates your support. That drops everything down a bit. That means my water level. I'll show you kind of how I came up with this. I just went to Lowe's and said, what can I find that'll do this? And... If you look right there, if we're sitting on that, we're coming about a half inch below the bottom of the rim of that pot is where the net cup comes. So I just need the water to barely touch this. And once we find out what our average root depth is from our one week of starting plants, if our average root depth is at least a couple inches and it might be below the net pot, we might be well below the net pot. That's what I would prefer. I would prefer that when we drop things into the flood tables, that we're not even touching our media at that point. The roots are deep enough. And if that's the case, whatever the depth of that air gap is, I can make it fine. But I know minimum, I can barely touch it because I don't have to worry about losing fluid levels. 
and be a half inch below here, about that deep. That means I only have to bring my flood tables up to about right there. Actually about right there. That's a lot less fluid. And what that means is there's a lot less risk of any kind of catastrophic failure here. There's a lot less consequences if they occur. And I don't need as much um, fertilizer fluid in the system as a whole. And with the recirculating nature of it, we're not going to have stagnant pockets. We're not going to have anything like that again. Using these are purpose-built. These are actually designed to flood up and then drain out, ebb and flow. That's what they're designed to do. And the way they do that, you install an ebb and flow, flow uh, system that's based on uh, two of your uh, uh, bulkheads. And you leave one way down the bottom like that. And you put a stand up on the other at the height you want your flow to go to instead of doing a bell siphon. And then what you do is you pump water up through your lower uh, bulkhead. And then it comes up to an overflow stack on a second bulkhead. And it overflows. And you figure out how long that takes. You use a digital timer to run your pump. And you have it run five cycles a day, let's say. And it'll run just a little longer than necessary to overflow that stand up. And when the pump shuts off... All the water goes back down through and back into your sump out of the same pipe that delivered it. That's a cool way to do ebb and flow that I recently learned about. And to, to make that work, they build these channels into these flood trays like this to make sure 100% of fluid goes back down through its delivery point. That's not how I'm going to run it, but that is going to mean that we're going to have a really good flow. Again, nutrient solution coming in that side, being discharged from that side, down to the next tray, back across, down to the sump. Uh, again, 15 minutes every two hours is my original plan. I might pump some air into it. I'm definitely going to have some kind of venturi going on in the sump so that every time that pump kicks on, not only is it recirculating water, it's making oxygen into the affluent down in the sump and kind of pulling air through the sump as well to keep from having stagnant air. Anyway, that's it. That's how far I am so far. Um, most of the work so far has just been figuring out what is our count I wanted something that was like a fixed number per week, 15, 14, 18, whatever it was. 30 seemed to work out. About the only downside to get 30 in, I had to put a couple of them closer than the uh, the rest of them. But I figured with them on the outside, that won't matter. Put your smallest plants in those every week, and you're good to go. We'll catch up with you later. I do hope to see many of you down in Belton, Texas.